Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and if you are new here, I am a high school teacher in Brooklyn, New York and my channel is all about giving you tips, tricks, simple advice on how to make your classroom better and enhance your teaching experience along with a little bit of sprinkles of uh, things about myself, whether it be clothing, uh, things that I'm buying, a little bit of everything, but mostly teaching. So welcome back to my channel and if you clicked on this video, it's because you know we're going to be talking about substitute teaching. Now most teachers, before they ever become a full-on classroom teacher, have probably experienced substitute teaching in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it was just for a couple of days, maybe it was for an entire semester, an entire year. I was substitute teaching for about a semester and a half. And so I've learned a thing or two, and also now that I have my own classroom, there are some things that I wish substitute teachers did do or probably that they would do more often um, when it comes to the experience that they're providing for my students. So I put together 10 things for you guys. Hopefully they're helpful. And of course, as always, if you have been a substitute teacher, always write in the comments below what are some things that you found helpful because of course I have 10 things here but it doesn't mean that I am the end all be all. I'm sure there are other things that you guys can recommend that I just never thought about. So let's get into it. Tip number one, introduce yourself. I know this sounds like an obvious one, but especially if you are a new substitute teacher, you may get so nervous with seeing your students for the very first time that you may just forget to introduce who you are. So make sure that you introduce yourself. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Miss Rodriguez. I'm going to be your substitute teacher for, insert teacher's name. I'm really excited to be with you all today. I'm sure it's going to be a great class. And before we get started, let's just go over some of the expectations for today. Super simple introduction. Um, if you want, I know some substitute teachers would say things like, oh, well, um, I went to this high school or blah, blah, blah. You don't really have to get into too much detail. I think sometimes, from my experience, high school students, they kind of get annoyed when the substitute teacher is like giving them this whole song and dance about their life. Um, so I would say keep it short, keep it minimum, but definitely introduce yourself. Tip number two, establish a strong and confident presence especially if you're teaching high school. And again, this is just my experience. So you may have to have a different approach if it's elementary, but for sure, middle and high school, you wanna make sure that you have a strong presence. Middle school and high school students, they can smell when someone is intimidated and it's totally normal to feel a little nervous, but definitely talk yourself up a little bit, okay? Give yourself a pep talk walk in there like you belong there you do belong there so walk in there like you believe it look uh look at them in their eyes scan the room don't look down on the floor um just really try to compose yourself and be confident because the students will respect that and if you do end up showing up to that school again they'll know like okay that person's cool they know what they're doing even if you don't know fake it until you make it okay definitely put up this presence that you are strong and that you are confident. Don't be mean, but definitely be strong and be confident. Tip number three, explain and also display student expectations. It is imperative that even as a substitute teacher that you have your own student expectations. Some people may call these rules, but I just like to call them student expectations. It's important because the teacher that you're covering for, they may have their own classroom rules, the school may have their own rules, but it is important for you to set your own boundaries as well. Hey, before anyone leaves the room, please ask me so that I know who is entering and who is exiting. Simple things like that will really allow you to go a long way. Not only verbalize them, but maybe when the students are beginning to work on the assignment, write them on the whiteboard or if you have access to the computer and you can be in the room ahead of time it all depends because if it's passing of periods you don't really have that option 
but if you can be in the room ahead of time and maybe write them out on a PowerPoint slide so that when the students are coming in, they can be projected and they can stay up there the entire time. Maybe have them already on a flash drive and you can connect that on the flash drive. Um, just ways where you can display student expectations along with also verbalizing them so that everything is clear, right? The expectations are clear. They know what is expected of them. And so hopefully it allows for a much smoother class. Tip number four, arrive to the school at least 30 minutes early. I would highly advise 30 minutes, especially if you have never been to this school before. Most substitute teachers are teaching in different schools daily, maybe every couple of weeks you may change. And so it's important that you familiarize yourself with the building know where the bathroom is, know where the rooms are that you are scheduled to be uh, reporting to, know who the important staff members are. Hey, if there is an issue, who do I contact? What is their number when it comes to the phone, if the phones work in your school? You wanna make sure that you are familiar with all of those things because the last thing you want is for the bell to have rang and for a group of students to be out in the hallway cluttered together and then you have other teachers or maybe security like who's your teacher who's your teacher it's you running down the hallway trying to get to the room listen those moments may happen it's happened to me but if you can minimize how often they happen definitely try to do so so get there early so that you can work out all of those kinks tip number five be friendly and say hi to staff members most staff members are friendly okay we are stressed because we're always working with kids but we're friendly and so when you're walking down the hallway smile or just say hi you're going to stick out because you are an unfamiliar face okay so it just kind of makes it nice to kind of just break the ice and just be like hi good morning hi good afternoon and just keep it moving you don't have to stop and have a full-blown conversation some staff members may have conversations with you maybe in the teachers lounge i've had multiple conversations with substitute teachers um other teachers have had conversations with me when i was a sub so that's bound to happen but if you do see people in the hallway it's always you know just courteous and respectful to say hi when you're passing by someone tip number six review the work that the teacher left ahead of time this would ideally happen um, when you've gotten into the building early but please look at what the teacher has left one is it for the right class i have left work for subs but i teach two different subjects i teach economics and i teach government and i cannot tell you how many times my government students got the economics work and my economic students got the government work so you want to make sure that it is the right class being given the right work now sometimes teachers may not label their assignments correctly i totally understand that but definitely work out all of the kinks. Count how many students you have and then how many assignments you have or how many worksheets you have. You wanna make sure that you have enough copies. Teachers make mistakes. Uh, some are not as thorough as others when they are creating sub plans. So you really wanna prep for problems, right? That's just the way that it is. You want to prep for problems and one way is to get there ahead of time so that you can request extra copies for something in the event that you do not have enough or do not have the materials uh, necessary for the lesson. Tip number seven, bring additional work with you. This one is very important. Word searches, adult coloring books, um, sheets of empty tic-tac-toe, Whatever the case may be, you want to bring extra worksheets with you. These are backup because students work at so many different paces. I will be honest. I try when I leave sub work for the work to be longer than the actual hour of my class. So my classes are 56 minutes and I try to leave more than 56 minutes worth of work but you do have some students who will skim through and actually complete it. And as a sub, you're not gonna fight there with a student to complete work or to complete it thoroughly, right? That's not your job and you don't wanna put yourself in a really uncomfortable situation with a student, especially if it's an older student. But you wanna have other things on hand because students will finish early. Once the students have idle time, that's when it gets crazy. I am telling you, even when I have had to cover for a teacher in my, in my school, like. 
the minute a student is done with work, that's when they want to take out their phone. That's when they want to have unnecessary conversations. That's when they want to leave the bathroom 12 times. Like that's when they just want to go and do the things that they're not allowed to do. So definitely trying to keep them preoccupied until the class period is over is necessary. Tip number eight, bring lunch and snacks with you, especially if it is a new location. You do not know what to expect. Again, especially here in New York City, the truth is not every neighborhood is a safe neighborhood. And so you don't want to bank on being able to walk to the deli to go get a sandwich. Like you want to make sure that you have lunch with you and snacks with you. Also, you're not 100% sure what the schedule is that you will get, especially if it's for a different teacher. Every teacher has a different schedule. So one day you may have thought that you were gonna get your lunch at 12, but then another teacher's schedule doesn't have lunch until two, or maybe they don't have, or maybe their lunch is at 10. Like you wanna make sure that you bring snacks and that you bring lunch because the teacher schedules that you will get will always be different. And so that is the one thing um, when it comes to substitute teaching is the unpredictability of your schedule and what your day will look like. Tip number nine, have incentives, some type of uh, reinforcement of positive behavior. Now, I'm on the fence with this when it comes to my regular classroom, I'll be honest. There's, especially with seniors, there are some things that I'm just like, that's expected you need to be doing this. Like, I'm not gonna give you a sticker. I'm not gonna be like, good job for bringing a pen and paper to school. However, when you are a substitute teacher, it is really hard to get students to do the work. Think about it. Think about when you were a student and you saw a sub. That was like the best day ever to have a substitute teacher. You were so excited. This was like a free period. And so that is the same mindset. Kids are kids, or maybe it was just me but definitely kids are kids and they get excited when they have a sub. Um, but you wanna make sure that you are constantly encouraging them to do work. So maybe you see a student get the work done and you give one a sticker and then the other's like, oh, cool, sticker. Or maybe you can encourage them that you will give them a written shout out in the note that you'll leave to the teacher. So things where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna tell them how great you were, thank you so much. You can walk around the room and say, oh, what was your, what's your name? John, great job, John. I'm definitely gonna let Miss Rodriguez know how awesome you were. And so doing things like that hopefully will allow other students to be like, well, a substitute has never shouted me out before. Like I, I wanna make sure I get a shout out or I want a sticker. Stickers work with every grade, you guys. Every grade, even with seniors. So definitely just have little incentives. I'm not saying go broke, buying things so you can give to every student, no way. But definitely have something where you can be like, thank you so much for, you know, being a good sport. Thank you for being a leader. Thank you for doing the right thing. And then you can reward them with something really small. Tip number 10, which is my last tip. Leave the teacher a note and please be as objective as possible. One, the importance of leaving a note. As a teacher, I love when I read notes from the substitute. One, it shows me that they were so diligent in doing their job. They were so observant in knowing like who did what and, and, and when. I have gotten um, notes explaining to me which students excelled and it makes me so proud. Um, however, I will say the notes that are not objective really do get on my nerves, okay? Um, I've had notes where the substitute has said like, well, so-and-so was really rude and so-and-so was really disrespectful. And I absolutely can agree that certain students can be disrespectful and rude. But you gotta remember that a teacher's student is almost like their own child. And there's a fine line between sharing information with a teacher and almost like complaining about their kids. And... Again, it may just be me, but you wanna make sure that you are objective. So-and-so um, was asked to complete the assignment five times and refused. So-and-so was asked to sit down three times and walked around continuously. So-and-so did not ask to go to the restroom. So-and-so was a great leader and finished the work early. Thank you so much for your time. You want to leave notes, but you want to be as objective as possible. And the reason why I think it's important to leave notes is because 
teachers have a really big say in who they would want to come back and cover for their classes. So especially in my school, there's so many times where I've like came back the next day and my classroom is a wreck. Things are all over the place. There was food wrappers everywhere. And I always go to the main office like who was, who subbed for my classroom? And it's like, yeah, don't don't ask that person back because it was a mess when I came back. Like what was going on? Did anyone check up in this classroom? Or when I get notes from certain people, it's like, oh, okay, so this person, they care about their job. It's the impression that is given. And the same can be said where we can go to the main office and be like, hey, who was that that covered? They were great. They, everything was organized. All of the worksheets were there. They left me a note telling me where all the student work was. Things like that are really important. So you want to make sure that you're leaving notes to leave a good impression. Maybe leave your contact information for that teacher. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the 10 tips that I would give to you as substitute teachers, not only from my own experience, but also from being a teacher and knowing what I would expect or hope to expect from a substitute teacher. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. As always, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you all in the next one.